It's late October, but as you can see, it's still summer. We're in Cala Sabina, just behind Marina Cala de Sardi, our base in Sardinia, where we come to shoot most of our videos. Marina Cala de Sardi is the greenest marina in Italy. In a moment, we'll show you some pictures of it. We're here to shoot a new episode in the sailing series SVN Sailing. This time, we're going to talk about healing, everything we need to know about it, how much to heal, how far you can safely heal, and how to control healing. Come with me and I'll show you. We're in front of Tavolora, a few miles off Marina Cala de Sardi, northeast coast of Sardinia. We came here to shoot a video episode of SVN Sailing. This time we talk about healing. We're going to ask a series of questions about why the boat heals, whether it's safe, and what I can do when it heals too much. And we're going to look at them together with a friend of mine, engineer Antonio Coe. Hi, Antonio. Hi, Maurizio. Antonio is a naval surveyor and a sailing instructor, as well as a racer. So basically, a person qualified to talk about these things. Joining us is Simona Pasqua. Hi, Simona. Simona is a skipper on the NSS charter team and at home on a healed boat. So she'll be very useful help. Let's start with the first question. Antonio, those who find themselves healed over a lot for the first time, surely ask themselves a question. The gunwale is in the water. Am I safe? Am I sailing safely? From a balance point of view, yes. We have a lot of margin before we tip over. Indeed, even if the mass went underwater, the boat would still right itself. Okay, right now, how many degrees of healing do we have? We are now around 20 to 25 degrees of healing. So very little. 20 to 25 degrees is really little, although we feel it's a lot. The problem is that we are sailing very badly, practically trudging through the water. This is not the way to sail. Why do you say that? Do you have a hard rudder? How does it feel? The boat is almost unsteerable. The rudder is hard. I have to pull on the rudder a lot to hold it. And we have the gunwale completely in the water, which means the boat is not sailing along its hull lines. Right. The boat is designed with certain hull lines that are the ones that should be in the water. Right now, however, the freeboard is in the water. That part of the hull isn't designed to go into the water. Can you explain why the boat is so healed? Why are we in this situation? So how does it work? Consider that on the sails there is a force applied on the sail center and which is the resultant of all the aerodynamic forces and lead to healing. Below the surface we have a whole set of hydrodynamic forces that concur instead to create an opposite force on our hull. All the forces exerted on the sails are summarized in a center. A vector starts from this center. Imagine this vector as if it were an arrow. The more I tighten the sails, the more this arrow moves to the side. The more it moves to the side, the less force from the wind is translated into forward motion, and the more force is transformed into heel and drift. Also underneath, I have a swing-shaped keel, so the same thing happens down there. There's another vector, but it's pointing exactly the other way. So, the vector that's on the sails, the arrow that's on the sails, causes me to heal this way. And the forces that are on the hull cause me to turn the other way. Here is where a torque is created that makes me heal. So the boat heals. But why does it stop at one point? There are two other forces that come into play that are inherent in the hull. We have the weight applied to the center of gravity of the boat that tends to pull it down and the force of Archimedes that is applied in the center of the hull that tends to push it up. When we are at rest in port, the boat is transversely straight in an equilibrium. These two forces are on the same axis. One cancels the other, and the boat floats straight. When we are, as in this case, under sail, the center of gravity remains at that point there. The gravity will always tend to go downward. But what is it that changes? It is the submerged part of the hull which moves downwind because we have one half that is all out of the water and the downwind part that is submerged. So the center of the hull, which is the thrust point of the volume where the boat is floating, is going to move laterally, and that causes a torque to be created. 
two opposite forces but with a distance between them, and this will create a writing torque. When I'm healed like this, part of the hull is completely out of the water. If you look at the drone image, you can see that part is completely outside when part is completely in the water. So the center of all the forces that push the hull upward, that is the buoyancy forces, are no longer here where it should be when the boat is flat, but has moved over there, where the boat instead is submerged in the water, when instead the center of gravity is here. So over there, I have a force that pushes up, because it tends to make the boat float. And here, I have a force that pushes down. So I've created another torque, a torque that tends to straighten the boat, and is opposite to the torque that I said before, which tends to make the boat heel instead. This straightening torque is important both for not lying in the water, but also for moving forward. Absolutely both the forces that act on the sails and the forces that act on the hull. These two forces that hold us up allow us not to lie flat on the sea, therefore to catch the wind in our sails in order to move forward. Certainly, if I did not oppose this heel, what would happen? When the wind comes, it heals me over. The problem is not so much that it healed me so much, it's that the force of the wind healed the boat and went away, so I didn't have a chance to take the energy of that wind and turn it into a forward force. If, on the other hand, when the wind comes, I oppose it in this way, I manage to capture the force of that wind and I'm able to turn it into a force that moves me forward, which is why the writing torque is essential in the performance and the economy of the boat from a sailing point of view. At the beginning of the video, you mentioned balance. The boat's not going to sail well because the gunwale is in the water, because it's not balanced. How do I gain this balance? We have to act, do something. The wind has increased, and on the intensity of the wind, we can't do anything. It's not like we have a knob, you know. The only thing that we can act on is the sails. At first, we can try to change their profile, their shape, by slimming them down. Or, if the wind goes too high, we have to think about reefing in. That is, decreasing the surface exposed to the wind. How do I reef in? Which sail do I reef in? Should I reef in the Genoa first, then the main sail? What should I do? There is no rule because each boat has its own sail plan. The concept is to reef in proportionally and to maintain a balance of the boat. So I will reef in both mainsail and jib, and I have to look for the right balance of not having a boat that either goes to the wind or away from it. An example, here we are on a boat with a self-tacking jib. To make it quicker, I close the jib, but I have the whole mainsail up, so I'm still left with the problem that I have a sail center that is very much towards the stern, because it's all of the mainsail, and so the boat tends to go too much towards the wind. Perfect. The mainsail is a weatherly sail. That is, if the mainsail is stronger than the Genoa, the boat will go to the wind, while if the Genoa or the jib is stronger than the mainsail, the boat will move away from the wind. It will bear away. In both cases, I'm out of balance. To counteract the tendency, I'm forced to use the rudder like this. But if I do, it's like opening an aileron on an airplane. It acts like a brake. I turn the rotor and I slow the boat. So I have to find a balance and use the rudder as little as possible. I'll start by reefing in one point, since the self-tackling jib is so small, and see if with one point of reefing and all jib out, the boat is still balanced. If the boat is not balanced, I see it bears away. I start turning the jib furler until I find the balance point. When I find the balance point, I'll feel the boat's behavior change completely. How does it change? I will feel first of all that I will have to work much less with the rudder, because as you explained before, if the boat is unbalanced, I will have to use it to correct that unbalance. I will feel the boat is faster. The water flowing on the hull will become non-turbulent again. So it won't make that dull noise, but it will be a nice flow on the water, and I will feel the boat stable and fast. It'll become faster, because when the boat is heeled over too much, I don't have the right water lines in the water. But, as we said before, I have the freeboard. With this, I think we've seen a little bit of everything about skidding. Before you leave, however, I wanted to make a recommendation, especially to those who go on a cruise. People who go on a cruise with family may not have experienced people on board like we have. Simona, who can do anything on board. In that case, the law is cautious. Don't wait until you have 17, 18 knots of wind. 
When you get to 14, 15 knots, you start to reef in the first reefing point. Because when you get to 17, 18 knots, everything becomes more complex. Everything is more stressful, and you and those on board with you get nervous. So act first. Act before you need to work. That's the law. When you're short of experienced people on board, you have to act before the absolute need to act arrives. With that, I think we've said a lot, and I hope you're interested. If so, let us know and give us your like. I say goodbye to my friend Antonio. Thank you for your advice. Thanks to Simona for her invaluable help. Thanks to NSS Charter for providing us with what we needed to make this video. And I look forward to welcoming you to the next video from solovila.net. And now, let's head back. <laughs>